All right, so we focused so far on the reason why the play to earn model actually came into being. What is actually the benefit for the developer? There are actually many, right? One, there is a lot of security of data, right? There was an example of a very popular game, Rust, where the servers in France actually caught fire. A lot of that data was lost, unfortunately. Um, you know, um, there are um, other cases where now that your data, because it's decentralized, it's actually a lot more secure and uh, the gaming company themselves doesn't have to only worry about this. Uh, being on the blockchain itself gives a lot of security to that data, which is definitely a benefit to the developer. The larger benefit, however, is that the gaming, the gray market in gaming in-game items is huge, right? And the developers themselves don't benefit from it at all. Again, I will take the example of Clash of Clans. When Clash of Clans became really popular after the release in 2012, I think around 2014, 2015, I knew of many people who were buying maxed out villages at that time for $10,000 or even $20,000, right? These were people who didn't want to spend the time, uh, grind to actually max out their villages. And there were people who had spent the time and spent some money actually maxing those villages who were happy to sell these villages to other people who wanted to buy these maxed out villages. Supercell got no benefit from this whatsoever, right? These were off um, developer off market transactions that were taking place in a gray area where people were doing these peer to peer transactions. And there is no reason why the developer should also not get some benefit when these transactions take place. So by doing um, these now uh, play to earn models, where the users themselves are owners of these assets. And given that we now have smart contracts, we can actually incorporate that every time a transaction takes place, a fee of that transaction goes back to the developer so that, you know, we are promoting them. We are helping the developer actually make more money from this entire ecosystem. So they have more money to bring us even more interesting games and keep developing on the gaming world that we actually like, right? So the developer definitely stands to gain a lot out of it. Now let's look at what else does the user benefit from it? Okay. So some of the other user benefits that actually come from this play to earn model is that now actually it's provable that they own that particular in-game item, right? A lot of games like uh, particularly games which are user generated or become very popular, even like uh, Counter-Strike, they have issue of fake um, assets, right? Uh, Roblox has this issue a lot as well, where um, the user, uh, a creator actually creates something genuine. A lot of other creators, unfortunately, copy that and you can actually, instead of buying an original uh, skin for $5, you can buy that for either free or for 50 cents, so on and so forth. So the creator isn't benefiting, but neither is the user because they're buying fake things, right? A majority of users would actually like to support the genuine creator, but they didn't have any way to know what is fake and what is not. Now it's actually provable. The provenance of your asset is actually there and blockchain technology is really going to help you to do that. Also, you can now incorporate scarcity and increase the prices of these in-game items due to them being genuine collectibles, right? So if I make a particular sword, which is great, I can only say that, you know, only 50 of these swords will exist in this particular game. And I can actually now control that, which will actually increase the prices and give the benefit to the users, to the creators much more because of the scarcity aspect, the collectible aspect of this in-game item, right? The other beauty is a lot of people uh, need not even play the game to actually benefit from this trading marketplace itself, right? Because these items exist independent of the game itself and there is a marketplace to trade from which as we discussed, even the developer can benefit. Now I can just be a trader myself and come and select sort of which items I like, buy it off other creators or other users. And as they increase in value over time, because I know, um, you know, people are going to like these items even more, I can participate in this gaming marketplace without being a gamer or even grinding or ever actually playing the game. This is pretty much how real world market works as well, right? There are a lot of traders, um, you know, wholesalers in between who actually understand what the flow of goods and services are and are able to um, provide liquidity to the creators, users, producers, end users, 
um, so that there is a thriving economy that actually benefits everyone involved. So there's a huge benefit to the users, right? The other benefit is once I buy a particular in-game item, I can actually take it and use it in other gaming worlds, right? What developers uh, will be doing is they can take these blockchain game items and create various gaming mechanics around the same items, right? So my sword, which I can use in Minecraft um, to actually, you know, kill um, uh, pillagers can be a sword which can actually open a key in another puzzle game, can actually be uh, a sword which becomes a almost like a Harry Potter magical wand in another game, can become something with which I defend and make, make it a shield in another game called For Forgotten Articrafts, which is on the engine multiverse. Um, so there are, you know, the same in-game item can be used in various games for me as a user for various different use cases, right? And the developers get the chance to use the same in-game items and create different mechanics around it. But I, as a user, can benefit by purchasing it once, having to being able to use it in multiple games, multiple times, and also benefiting from it by proving its authenticity, its provenance, benefiting from it um, by being scarce and increase in its value as a collectible. So that's great for me as well. Let's now look at um, some of the popular, um, you know, play to earn games that are out there, right? So one is Axie World. Um, in Axie World is a breeding and compete game. Breeding and compete genre of play to earn models really came from the beginning of uh, the play to earn games, which was Crypto Kitties, right? Crypto Kitties came many years ago um, when maybe NFTs and play to earn model wasn't as popular as it is today. So it, in a way, CryptoKitties is the father of all the play to earn genre itself. CryptoKitties was probably the first breed and compete subgenre. Axie World is another breed to compete subgenre, where the idea is that I actually buy um, a particular Axie. Um, I actually breed it. I compete with other Axies. As I win matches, I get SLPs or small love potions. I can trade the small love potions, sell them uh, in the market for um, you know the currency or I can keep using them to upgrade uh, my Axie to be able to encash much larger rewards uh, later on, right? So that is your breed to compete genre. This is not um, free to enter because you actually have to put some money up front in an, uh, to buy these Axies. We will probably cover um, the actual mechanics and the pricing and how much money you can make from these play to earn models in another video. Um, I think that will be very interesting. Um, you know, Axie World is a game which is extremely popular in Philippines. Um, it is rumored that many people have now made this as some part of their living. Um, so there is some money to be earned by in this free to, uh, sorry, in this play to earn model as well, right? Uh, the other sort of games that are there, which actually where you can start free are games like Alien World, right? So in Alien World, you're actually going to different worlds. As it says, you actually mine their currency called Trillinium. Um, and you are actually uh, for these different worlds using different equipments. You get a different chance uh, of mining that particular currency, right? Um, and the beauty is I can actually pay for better currency. I can actually uh, own land where if anyone else comes to mine, I keep 20% of the mining that is actually generated out of my land. So again, they are creating different ways for me to get involved into the ecosystem, whether as a user who doesn't want to spend any money up front or as a user who wants to spend some money, enhance not only my gameplay, but also increase my chances of earning more from it. And obviously all the in-game items that I buy are actually my um, in-game items. I own them. Um, and I should be able to sell them off and hopefully later there'll be more gaming mechanics which will develop around these in-game items which will make them even more valuable for me as a user but for also others who will become part of this ecosystem. So that is our summary of uh, the play to earn uh, blockchain gaming, a new model that is actually taking gaming by storm. It is uh, really, as I said, centralized around giving value back to the users who are spending north of $150 billion on the gaming market every year, right? 
let us know um, how you thought um, this video is. Also, would be great to understand from you guys what are the other topics that actually we should cover and we'll be very happy to cover those in the subsequent videos. Take care and keep gaming.